Hey friends, Lucian here with the Bullish Bears team making the watch list video for Monday, uh, September 18th. And uh, here we go. Uh, the market broke the ever elusive 2500 number. Uh, so it broke record highs. It's in an uptrend. Uh, who knows what's going to happen moving forward, but it, it's uh, looking pretty good. Uh, it has some breakouts here. You had an inverse head and shoulders breakout. So on the daily, you have a left shoulder, a head, a right shoulder, broke out above the neckline, <coughs> and now you have a bull flag forming. Um, so it's very, very important to watch these patterns uh, when you're trading as well. It's important to learn how to long and also how to short. So when the market is going up, you can maybe take more long plays. And then when the market's uh, coming down or pulling back, maybe look at shorts. Um, but it's important to learn both. Obviously, right now, it looks like the market's uh, going to continue bullish. So who knows? you got to keep watching it. But it's all about watching support, resistance, and patterns and uh, kind of really going from there. I uh, want to show you something. <clears throat> Just uh, let me see if I have it saved here. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, with big buttons. Let me do this. I'm going to show this and I'm going to put up big buttons. Um, okay. So I want to show you guys this. Um, like I was like I've been kind of like talking in my pre the past or the most recent videos um, about shorting and how simple it is uh, to do. Um, you know, it's basically just the opposite of longing. So, for instance, <clears throat> this these buttons are a little grayed out right now. I'm not sure why, but oh, maybe because I can't buy that stock. Let me do this. Oh, there we go. Um, so that was the SPX. That's why. Uh, it wasn't showing this. So as of right here, you can see the buy the ask, sell the bid button. You can go up here, configure, and then you could uh, add buy bid and sell the ask as well. So let me just do that for the heck of it. Just add that over here, add item. Um, let's see here, okay. Uh, wait, sell, let me do so, sell the ask. I don't know why that didn't add, add item, there we go. <coughs> okay, perfect. So in theory, obviously you always wanna try and get the best deals that you can get with buying a stock, um, you know, by doing either limit orders or hotkeys, or again, Thinkorswim has these buttons that you can click auto send and they're basically almost like hotkeys, but they're not editable. You can only just literally buy the ask, sell the bid, join the bid, which is, uh, buy the buy the bid or sell the ask, which is join the ask. Very weird why they show that that way. I don't know why they just don't have buy and sell, <clears throat> but they don't. So in theory, this is how um, buying a stock would work. So obviously, again, you want to always try to get a better deal through a limit order or buying lower. But if you were to buy the ask, right? So let's say you believe this stock HMY was HMNY was going up. If you buy the ask, you immediately get filled. As long as, again, um, you know, the stock's not going crazy or it's not moving up and down really rapidly. In theory, when you buy the ask, you immediately get filled. When you own the stock and you have that position, when you sell the bid, it immediately, in theory, sells um, and you get filled. So buying the ask on the way up gets you immediately filled. Selling the bid to get out of your position uh, immediately gets you filled. Again, not 100% of the time, but the majority of the time, right? So <clears throat> if you were to buy the stock and you wanted to get a better deal, you could always buy the bid, right? So if you bought the bid, you know, the bid is lower than the ask uh, pretty much all the time. Sometimes that's even, but um, the bid is always basically lower than the ask. So if you buy the bid, it's lower usually than the ask and you try to get a better deal. That's if you're using, again, hotkeys or buttons like this. Obviously, you can do a limit order for a specific price, right? <clears throat> so now let's say you're in the position. Let's say you bought it at the bid. You got it at a lower price. Now, as the price is going up, if it has momentum, 
instead of selling on the bid, you could try selling at the ask and selling into momentum and getting a better fill, right? Um, it's just a matter of how patient you are, but you know, that's how it works. So, you know, you could buy the ask, get in immediately, sell the bid, get out immediately. Or you can buy the bid, try to get a better deal, wait for it to pull back and hit your price. And then on the way up, you can sell at the ask, selling into momentum. It's all a matter of your preference, but that's obviously trying to get a lower entry price and trying to sell at a higher exit price, right? <clears throat> so here's how shorting works. It's just basically the opposite of this, right? So what you would do, uh, obviously, again, you want to try to get better deals. But in theory, what you would do is right off the bat, if you sell the bid, that means you're automatically entering the short, right? Don't get too bogged up as to how you get it. Basically, the, the, <coughs> the broker is loaning you shares uh, to short, right? Um, so if you're giving them back that day, don't even really worry about it. Don't even worry about how the process is working. Don't overthink of it. If the stock is falling and you sell the bid, you would immediately get filled. So for instance, let's say this one, you sold the bid, you're in at 317, right? So you're selling it at 317. Obviously, you got to look support and resistance. All that is very, very, very important. But as the price is falling, you sell the bid, you're in at 317, right? To cover your position immediately, if you want to get filled and covered immediately, you would buy the ask. So immediately, if I sold right now the bid at 317 and then immediately bought it back at 320, now I just lost three cents. So ideally, uh, I want to sell, let's say, at the bid and have the bid price keep dropping or have the bid and ask price keep dropping. And obviously, if I was to buy at the ask, I want this ask price to be, you know, ideally a lot lower than 317. But the more that the ask price falls below uh, the bid price, then I would cover my position by buying the ask. And ideally, I sell high and buy lower. <clears throat> so in essence, if I was to sell the bid at 317, and this ask, let's say, went down to 310. If I bought the ask at 310, then I just made seven cents. I sold at 317 and I bought it back for a lower price at 310. I made uh, seven cents. So that's really what it'd be. So ideally, if it falls, you sell the bid and then cut by the ask with the ask price being lower than the bid price that you bought it at. Right. So that's for. Um, getting immediate fills, right? Sell the bid, buy the ask. Um, now, you could also do something like um, sell the ask. So a lot of people, like when the price is falling, a lot of times it wants to immediately fall or jump back up. So some people will wait, and then as price bounces back up, they'll sell the ask, which is higher. So they'll wait for the price <coughs> to fall down. Then once it bounces back up, they might sell at the ask, um, trying to get a better fill price. And then as the price falls, if price is really falling, just like when price is really rising, if you want to sell the ask uh, as price is really jumping up to get a better you know, price, as price is really falling, if you were to, um, instead of buying the ask, you could buy the bid. So if price is really dropping and falling into the momentum of it falling down, you could buy the bid instead. Um, obviously, you always want to look at bid and ask price, and that's it. So that's just a, it's just the opposite um, process of <clears throat> going long on a stock. Again, obviously, you can do limit orders as well. It's very important to look at level two once it's running and time and sales and try to get a better entry price. But some people like limit orders and then some people like uh, hotkeys. I'm personally a hotkey person, so I'll look at level two, see where the buyers and sellers are, and then see where the bid and the ask are to determine whether I'm going to buy the ask, sell the bid. Um, but basically, that's in theory uh, what you would need to do to short a stock. So I highly encourage you to set up a paper trading account like this Think or Swim one and just literally practice buying the ask, selling the bid, going long on stocks. Then, you know, buying maybe the bid and then selling at the ask. Just keep practicing back and forth. And then with shorting, practice. Do make a 100, 200 practice trades of selling the bid, buying the ass. Just practice the buttons. Sell the bid, buy the ass. Sell the bid, buy the ass. Then try, you know, selling 
the ask, buying the bid, selling the ask, buying the bid, and then practice with just sending up hotkeys, doing the same thing, the same motions. Um, <clears throat> and that's it. It's just practicing doing that uh, and obviously looking at level two and time and sales. So that's really it. I kind of want to keep stressing that because a lot of people have been questioning with shorting and how to do it. But that's the simple process of shorting. It's not complicated uh, to do. Don't worry about really how it works. Like, what does that mean? Borrowing shares from a broker and confused about that. Don't get caught up in the minutia of it, especially if you're getting if you're new and you're just starting out. Um, don't overcomplicate it. Just don't hold overnight, uh, obviously, until you get super good with trading. Uh, if you're day trading it, just, just obviously, you basically want to sell at a higher price and buy it back at a lower price. Very simple. So you want to sell high, buy low. Sell high, buy low. Um, rather than buy low, sell high. So it's just the opposite concept of longing a stock. When you long a stock, you want to buy it low and sell it higher. When you're shorting a stock, you want to sell it high and then buy it back lower. And when you buy it back, it doesn't mean you own the shares because your broker is loaning you out those shares when, they're, when, they're, um, when you're shorting it. So basically, they loan it to you, you buy it back, and then you're even. That's the concept of shorting. They loan it to you, you buy it back, you're broke even, you don't own shares of the stock. It's that simple, right? <clears throat> so... Uh, hopefully that was helpful uh, tutorial for you on shorting. I'll keep kind of doing this stuff, kind of uh, doing my best to help you guys out with the concept of it. But you'll see in the trade room every day I'll talk about stuff like that I'm entering that might, that's a short because uh, I tend to be a little bit more short biased. Um, so it's important to understand why I'm doing that. Um, and again, you'll see these alerts. Um, oh, they triggered, ah, uh, man, because uh, now it's Saturday, you won't see them. But you'll see that there was a bunch of alerts that triggered uh, yesterday again. So my watch list, these are, they're absolutely working. If you're, <coughs> excuse me, paying attention to the alerts that I'm setting up, these alerts are actually, they're really been awesome. So uh, it's important to take the watch list that I do, look at the alerts, and then see why I'm setting them up the way they do. Uh, that I do. Um, if it's a bullish potential day the next day, uh, you might see some that are, uh, you know, obviously majority of them for going long. But then there's going to be a lot of alerts that I set up that are short bias when price falls below a certain level. So it's very important to pay attention to when I do those as well and practice your shorting. Um, but just really pay attention to these alerts I'm sending out. This is a very valuable service that we're doing by giving you alerts, not only making these videos and the watch list, but then giving you the alerts as to what to look for. Um, it's really kind of setting it up. But, you know, a lot of people will think, oh, I want to join a chat room where they give me what trades to make. And what people don't realize, that's not really what you want to do. You don't want to pay 150 bucks a month to a chat room somewhere and get into the same chat room that it, or the same trades that everybody else is making because you're always going to net you're always going to miss the, the bigger entry and the bigger exit. So you're following the herd, and you're going to get trapped many of those times. And so it's what it's important is to <coughs> be a part of a trade room that teaches you how to trade yourself. Once you become a good trader, you don't need to pay 150 bucks a month to be in someone else's trade room. So that's where, number one, our trade room is free right now, which is... Yeah, I think we're crazy <laughs> by doing that. You know, we're not, we have over 500 members in our trade room right now, and we're doing it for free where we could charge at least 100, 150 bucks a month for us. So do the math. That's over 50,000 a month that we're giving up in potential income to basically teach you guys to be good traders. Um, so that's our business model. It's a little bit crazy. We're trying to go on a kind of a faith based model. Hopefully, uh, you know, people will contribute and help us to continue to grow. But um, again, that's just we're that's what we're basically trying to do is really help you guys to become really good traders and build a community uh, while doing it. So <clears throat> that's my rant here for a few minutes, and let's get into the watch list. So I kind of change things. I go back and forth as to what's going on with the market. Uh, but in general, I try to keep stocks under $10. I like to manage my risk. Some people like to do bigger, more than $10 stocks. I do less than $10 because I like to have really tight stop losses. And when you get stocks over like $10 and $15, $20, a stock could move up 40 50 60 cents within a one-minute candle within a blink. 
and that's hard to manage risk that way. So I personally don't like to do that because I like to really, really have tight stops. So that's why I do this, uh, 30 cents to $10. You can do it however you want. Minimum 300,000 in volume, five cent gain on the day. I put a minimum, this time today I did uh, 100 million shares outstanding. Um, that's kind of like the uh, float. <coughs> Basically, I'm looking for stocks that have held their highs on the day for a potential breakout on the daily the next day or a potential short uh, stocks that are overextended to short them on the way down. So basically, when I'm making my watch list, I want it's very important to look at the areas of support and resistance and where I create the alerts. Because as I'm making my watch list video, this is literally you looking over my shoulder as to what I'm doing. So I'm trying to make these videos to help you guys out. But at the same time, it's actually just me making my own watch list for the next day. So as you see all these lines and the alerts that I'm creating, it's just me creating them for myself and I'm just recording them while I'm doing it. So you're actually seeing exactly what I'm looking at. So it's very important to pay attention, right? So HMNY. <clears throat> so with this one, um, I would have... I don't like it. I'd like to see it above that 385 marker. If it held its highs and didn't crash uh, at the end of the day on Friday, I'd potentially put it on, but I don't like it. BITCF, stay far away from this one. These bit, This Bitcoin one, there's a lot going on lately with these Bitcoins. This one got SEC halted recently. Stay far away from this stock. Just I don't know much about it other than, look at this, this is ridiculous. 315 all the way down to what almost zero and then pop back up don't get caught in that garbage ASTC um, so this one's been in a downtrend um, it finished oh uh, you want to see this one break above this 89 cents it's a possible reversal it's been heading downwards it closed above the 50 SMA be careful around the 119 marker. Um, so this is potential for a potential breakout. I would also be careful around that $1 marker. Um, so I would, instead of setting my alert, you can get in earlier with the anticipation of the break of a dollar. But I kind of like to be careful because this thing can go up to 90 cents, hit a dollar and fall back down. So ideally you want to see this thing break above a dollar. So I would put an alert at 98 cents again it's all a matter of what you're comfortable with because uh whole and half dollar amounts are nat are uh natural uh um support and resistance areas so you want to see it break a dollar then be careful of this one dollar and 19 cent area this 200 sma you want to see it clear it so again it's up to you whether you want to get in beforehand but you want to see it clear a dollar then be careful around 119 you might want to take some profit so but I will put ASTC on the watch list. MGTI, another Bitcoin one. Um, so this is a potential head and shoulders pattern. So you can see a head, left shoulder over here. So you want to see it. You want to be careful, well, even around these areas. This could be the left shoulder right now, right around this 242 area. So that's the first left shoulder. If it breaks that, then actually, let me do this. Right now you want to see it clear that 244, which is the 13 e, uh, EMA. Um, it did hold its highs. So you want to see it clear this 224 and then clear the 242-ish area. So me personally, I want to see it clear above that uh, 244-ish area. Let me just do this. Yeah, right. It's... Yeah, let me see here. Sometimes it's hard to kind of gauge these. So it kind of makes me a little nervous to get in at 224 when it could bounce right back at the 244. So I like to set an alert. Maybe I'm going to put it around 248 
because I personally want to see it break 250 because if it breaks 250 then it can run up to two three dollars or so I don't like that resistance and this pattern of the of the head and shoulders right there because this could go back up and just smack down I want to see it clear that right shoulder and continue upward so with MGTI I will put that one on the watch list but again I want to see it ideally break 250 um ABNAF. So that one is at yearly highs. Um, but I, I just don't like these candles, so no. NETE, no. ARWR. Um, don't really like that pattern. NCMI. Yeah, let me take a look at this one. So NCMI finish at the high of day. I want to see it break 690, but ideally I want to see this thing break seven dollars. So I want to see it. I'm gonna put an alert right around. So let me get over. Sometimes it's hard to draw these lines here. Ah oh, man, I'll put one right there. So I want to see this thing break above $7. So if this breaks above $7, um, so you want to see it break today's, uh, or uh, Friday's close, or the high, $690, then see it break $7. If it breaks $7, you know, be careful below around $8. Uh, but I want to see it break $7. I'm going to put an alert right around $697. Um, and then support area could be right around, you know, the 630s range. Six, it could fall back half of that candle. So you want to see it break $7. If it breaks $7, be careful around $8. Also be careful around 750s uh, area as well. Um, but it could potentially run. Um, it's closing above the indicators. So that's what I'm looking for, for a break of $7. And then... Uh, you know, see if it continues upwards, but that's a nice looking pattern. So N C M I uh, E N P H. I think that's a pot stock. I could be wrong, but okay. This one here. <clears throat> so this one did finish at its highs. It's breaking right above a half dollar amount, which is great. Um, I want to see it break that 153. So I'll make this red. I like to look at that. If it breaks above 153, this thing could go right up to two dollars. This could have easily a potential 50 cent move um, with support falling back down, maybe around um, this 130s area, kind of the top of that cup and handle. This is kind of like a kind of like a cup and then a handle. So if this thing breaks above the 153, I'll put an alert right around 151 or 152. If it breaks above the 150, that could go easily up to $2. Uh, but if it breaks 153 and then falls below 153, get out. So if you're taking this long and then it falls, you want to be careful because then it's potentially reversing. Um, <clears throat> so ENPH, um, I will put that one on the watch list. Uh, let me see here. Sorry, I'm putting these just to show you guys. I keep showing you that keep showing you guys uh, that I'm doing this. But what I like to do is I like to have. I take some of the stocks on my watch list at night and then some of the ones from trade ideas in the morning. And this is how I watch stuff. So you'll see my alert set up with the support and resistance lines. And when an alert goes off and it disappears, then I know it's something to take a look at potentially to maybe trade. So I just take the ones that I really like looking at and put them over there. IDXG. Uh, hmm. Potentially flagging. I want to see it. See, ideally with IDXG, I'd like to see this thing break $2. Um, 
But that one, once it gets between 180 to two dollars, you know things can get really messy around there. So I don't like it. AMSC, yeah, I like that one. So AMSC, want to see it break 592? Yesterday's or Friday's uh, close, I'll just put 493. <clears throat> but ideally, I want to see it break five dollars. So let me see if I can get, I'll just do that, $4.99. I want to see this break uh, $5. And if it can break $5, uh, I'm going to put an alert right at $4.99 as well. So if this breaks $4.99, that could go easily up to $5.52, $5.50 areas, which is the 200 SMA. Obviously, if it breaks $5 and fails, get out. But if it breaks $5 and it holds, $5 would be your uh, support, a new level of support. And then, you know, that could be a nice run, uh, potentially up. And that might be a nice breakout, especially with a bullish market. So for, I want to see that thing break $5. I like AMSC. Um grow looks like these i think these are these marijuana stocks yeah breakouts but look at these crazy candlesticks no coincidence that that thing fell below right at two dollars smack back down casi um <clears throat> don't like it i would have kept it on but i don't like how it pulled back like that mbot uh no pir yep so pir like it, it's above five dollars. Want to see it break 524. Be careful around 550, but you know, you see a cross over here 13 cross of 50. That's a bullish sign. Uh, five dollars, I would be careful as a potential support and then see it if it falls down below that. But if it breaks this five, uh, what is that, 523, 24 area. That's a bullish sign. Um, so I would put an alert right around that 524. Again, be careful around 550. And then six dollars to 619. But you know, this one might be a nice play. PIR, Pier 1. Let's see here. Uh, B U R. Nope. B W. Possibly this one's been annoying me lately. It's just such a slow mover. A P V O. Um. I don't like the pattern. It could go. This could be a V bottom breakout. I don't really like it. N O G. Uh. No. B B O X. No. Eh. Could. Let me see, 330. Well, it could be a pot potential reversal going. Um, I don't love it. BIOA, eh, potentially, let me see. Uh, don't love it. RADA. Again, you don't want to bog your watch list down with this stuff. I don't like to bog it down with just stuff that is just uh, too much because you don't want to look at too many stocks. Sometimes there's ones I don't put on the watches because if I'm looking at some of these other ones, these other ones might be a better play. You don't want to have 15, 20 stocks that you're going crazy taking a look at. Um, this one could be a poten potential another one. I don't know. Um, I'd like to see it break 324. Ended at 306. Uh, not going to put it on. CLSN, no. LMFA, no. KODK, this is a potential one right here. Um, so I'd like to see it break 854, closed right at 845, pull back right at 850. So if this thing can break 854, let's see here. If it could break 854, this could easily go up to this $9 area. You'll see there's a gap between 887 
a 9.15 that that could easily go up at some point and fill. But be careful right around 8.87. But 8.53 to 8.87, I'll make that a kind of red. Um, if you can break this 8.50-ish area, it can go up there and then see if it rejects off the gap or if it goes into it. <coughs> but KODK, definitely one to watch. And MTBC. Uh, don't love it. NXTD. See, this one keeps. Uh, I keep in. I, this one's been on the watch list a few time, a few days now. I just. I don't like how it just. I want to see it clear that this area, this three dollars, obviously. Uh, it's going to be a big area right around that. Yeah, right at three dollars. Um, I'd personally like to see it traded if it hits there, uh, three dollars. But I'm actually going to put it on the watch list because I want to see it start broaching these areas here. And if it pulls back, this might be a nice short right down to 225. So this could be actually a really nice short. I want to see if it goes. So I like this one. Personally, I like this at or below 275, which is yes, below uh, create an alert at or below 275 for a potential short. So if it goes up, you can take this, get, you know, be careful, 276 to three dollars. But if that thing starts to fall, that could be a really nice short, easily down to 225. That's a 50 cent move. So that's where I would take a look at NXT personally. But again, you can play it for a scalp. NXT D. F R E D. <clears throat> yeah, if that breaks. 747, but I want to see it ideally break 750. Um, if that breaks 750, that could be a nice move. With support, eh, let's see, where's seven dollars? Right around that seven dollar area. So if it can break above 750, I'll put an alert rate at 750. <clears throat> that could potentially move up. Uh, that could have some definitely some room to go. Uh, F R E D. And H O S. That's another nice one. I want to see it break above. Again, once it's above a whole or half dollar amount, that could be a nice run. Uh, I want to see it break that 352 area. It's above a half dollar amount. So, right around 351, I'll set an alert. If that goes from there, that could really, I mean, that could go either way. Maybe support right around this kind of 311-ish area. $3, obviously. But if that goes, that could be a nice breakout. Um, and obviously, if it breaks 352 and falls below it, get out. Uh, but HOS looks nice. There's some nice plays potentially from Monday. I'm noticing too now that I added the uh, some of the ones that can go above 50 million. There's some additional plays uh, for shares outstanding. LPTH, nope. PES, no, I don't like five ones. Ones with five. Um, I want to see that break. There's lots of choppiness up in here. You want to see this get. I don't like it. I want to see it's too close to that 464 with all this going on. Don't like it. RAS. Nope. ENT. Nope. QHC. Uh, so this one. This one might be a nice breakout. This is almost like an inverse head and shoulders, but kind of. Yeah, it is. It is an inverse head and shoulders. 
right shoulder, head, or sorry, left shoulder, head, right shoulder, going right up to the baseline here. Look at that, it's super close. You'll see it even rejected the other day at the 471. So I wanna see it right at 471. I wanna see a breakout there. If that breaks out, that could really move. Um, so I will put QHC on the watch list. EGLT. Uh, that's another one. Want to see it break one? It's kind of a slower mover, but you want to see it get up to that 169 for it to go. Um, it's kind of a slow mover. I'm not going to put it on FSNN. And uh, hmm. Let's see here. It is finishing above three dollars. Want to see it break 315, and then be careful at 357. If it breaks 315 at, say, 314 area, 313. Uh, again, the market's bullish, so this might be, these are the things to be careful, you know, be very mindful of. If the market's bullish, play it bullish. So FSNN, there's lots of potential plays. Um... Let's see here. Man, I already filled up my ones that I'm watching on my other one here, so we have to condense some of these. Uh, I'm going to try and zip through this. BNED. Uh, man, it's, man, there's so many nice potential plays forming here. 633 up to 676. That's a nice potential breakout. If this can go and break above that 631 area. Let's see here, put one in alert there, 629-ish. If that can break that 631, that could easily go up to fill that gap and go right in there. That's a nice bullish sign right there, but you want to see it break above. Uh, I might even put it at 630. Man, so many really nice plays. B-N-E-D. Um, let me see which one. Let's see. B-N-E-D. As you can see, guys, I have this filled up. So I try to find some space of ones that I like to replace. Um, so, <clears throat> But this may change Monday. I might look at something tra on trade ideas or something I might like better. But uh, this is what I'm doing. And then I look at the patterns uh, that are forming and looking for potential breakouts. Um, so that's what I do. Um, BNED, SALT, no. BPMX, no. CSBR, FRB, K. Um, I know eight. I mean, this could potentially run here. It's a close above $9. Um, which is a whole dollar amount. Want to see it break 90, 90, what is this, 907. Want to see it break above there. If it goes above there, I mean, that could potentially run. Um, let me see, I'll put an alert at 904. But we do have a bunch of plays, not a ton of volume. I don't know if I'm going to put that one on just because we have so many plays INFI uh, AQMS EVRI ARQL so this one I really like because this is an overextended stock 619 really like this at its yearly highs Support would be really right at this 568 and then 542. This continued, could continue to run higher, but it also could be a really nice pullback. So these are ones I really personally like to find is these overextended ones. Uh, if it breaks 617, take it higher. But if it breaks 650, uh, below 615, maybe I'll put it at 613 uh, at or below. 
614, this would be a nice short. Uh, so this could really, this could be, could go up further and then it could really pull back at some point. It's had some multiple green days. These are ones I personally really like to look at. <coughs> QNST. Um, I don't even know which one I want to take off my watch list now at this point. Let me see. MCMI. Um, let me put QNST over here. Um, where did I see this? Okay, ABUS. That's another potential one. I don't really like the way that's looking though. CETX. Uh, don't love it. Let's see if there's any new high ones I like. No, Zag. This would be a nice one potentially. I don't like trading really above $15, but if that pulls back, that could be a nice fall back down. Um, ABUS, uh, ESCO. BBD, that might break. That might be a potential breakout. CDXS, ITUB. Um, let's see here. I try to look at this extra list of the new highs one of anything potentially moving maybe it didn't have as high of a gains on the day but it might be looking to pull back um care oty apps uh let's take a look at this one here so this one's at a yearly high <coughs> uh nr I'd like to see that either one break 960, which is the yearly high, or watch it for potential breakdown if it falls below this 939, with support being this 868. If it falls below this 830, what is this, this 939 area? I would actually put it, it's right at 950. So. What is this right here? 9.39. I might put it as an alert right here. Create an alert at or below 9.39 for a potential short. If it falls below there, um, that could be a nice short on the way down. See that? It's, it would be below... Instead of looking at it to break the previous day's high for a bullish, it'd be the previous day's low. And if it breaks previous day's low, this thing could really fall back down. Uh, so it's definitely one to keep an eye on. Um, so I'm going to put QHC, let me see, NR on the watch list for that reason. And for right now, I'm just going to put that on the these for the watch list now. This video is long enough, but uh, that's it, guys. You're just you just really looked over my shoulder. <clears throat> these videos are a little bit longer because I'm showing you exactly what I'm looking for, uh, what I'm looking to potentially do, and um, you know that's really basically it. So just a couple other housekeeping things that I like to do at the end of each video. Uh, if you have not liked our fan page yet, make sure that you do that over on Facebook. We are the Bullish Bears. Uh, make sure you like and follow our fan page. Uh, we post our updates over here as well as our uh, every morning by 9 a.m. We post our trade ideas, pre-market watch list, as well as our Benzinga news uh, as well. These are two tools that we get you community discounts on of 15% off trade ideas, which is our favorite live market scanner. Uh, you can see we post the pre-market watch list there. So basically you would take the watch list that I do at night here and then uh, coincide it with trade ideas. And, um, you know, trade ideas is our favorite live scanner to do because sometimes what we put on the watch list, uh, sometimes something in the morning is better on trade ideas. So it's important to look at 
what's running over there. So in the meantime, if you're not able to afford trade ideas, just use our watch list. But when you can, make sure you pick it up from us. Not only do we get a community discount, which helps us keep growing, um, but um, or we get credit through the affiliate link. We also get you a community discount of 15%. And Benzinga is definitely our favorite uh, live news site. Um, or, you know, for live news and breaking news, uh, we get you a community discount of 25%. So we're providing you a lot of information with these tools, uh, which, uh, again, saves you a lot of money. It's a couple hundred dollars a month between the two. Um, but, again, when you can't afford them, we highly suggest picking these two tools up. They are really awesome uh, tools. Uh, so again, like and follow our fan page, as well as if you haven't headed over to our website yet, make sure you go over there, uh, subscribe by email to our daily watch lists, uh, join our trade room, guys. Uh, our trade room, again, over 500 members in there right now. Uh, nobody offers free trade rooms like ours with all the content that we give, with the watch list, with the alerts. Um, you know, I would challenge you to if, to really go look out there and see what other trade rooms cost. And you're going to see they cost at least $100 a month, if not $150 a month plus, uh, you know, other places. So take just even 100 bucks a month times 500 members. That's $50,000 per month that Tim... Dan and myself are giving up by not charging community our, our community members. We're offering a lot of content. Um, we're teaching you. We're training you the mindset how to become a proper trader. Again, you don't want to just join someone's trade room that gives you alert alerts because they're going to give you the alerts that they're getting into. They're going to get a better entry than you, and then when they sell, you're going to be chasing um, their exits. So. You know, if everybody buys at the same time and everybody's selling at the same time, that that's crazy. Uh, the important thing you want to do is not get in on somebody else's alerts, but learn how to trade yourself the proper way because then that's you're going to be in control of the process from start to finish. So, again, we're giving up a ton of money uh, by not charging. Um, we don't charge our members, again, for our trade room that we offer. Uh, we're giving up, you know, again, lots of money, our courses. We have a couple thousand dollars worth of free trainings over here. And we're doing this because Tim, Dan, and myself, we're, we have a vision of just doing something different. We obviously like to be, we want to build a massive community and ideally someday down the road have a big enough community where the sponsors come in and would ideally pay Tim, Dan, and myself to give you guys the training so you guys could basically uh, take advantage of everything for free. Uh, I don't know if our business model will work. We're continuing to try it and build the community. But in the meantime, we're giving up a ton of money by char by not charging memberships. Um, so again, someday we may charge memberships. We ideally don't want to. But in order for us to be able to do that, we need to survive and grow off of the monthly contributions of our con community members. So we're just like anybody else, like YouTubers or your favorite cause or your church or your charity or something like that. Um, if you like what we're offering, you see value in it, and you'd like to contribute, we would greatly love your contributions. Um, you know, again, we believe we're worth well over $100, $150 a month uh, for a service. So we do have options for $50 to $100 a month. If you see value in us, you can uh, subscribe monthly and donate to us. But if you're on a budget and you don't have a lot of money right now, we have options for as low as $10 to $25 a month, uh, which, again, you know, that's – that's huge. You can take advantage of things for free that we're offering, or you can decide to give back. So if you'd like to give back, we'd greatly appreciate it. You can do it right here monthly, or you can donate uh, one-time contributions over here. Um, as well as we have a merchandise store. Uh, we have awesome logo. We have the Hope is Real slogan. Uh, and we have a whole ladies' apparel store, men's apparel, kids' apparel, hats, zip-up hoodies, mugs, and gifts. We have fantastic... Um, a whole merchandise store that's awesome so if you'd like to give back you know purchase from us um and wear our stuff you know and just it's it's really great quality stuff so um again we try to do our best to have really good quality so again there's our merchandise store here if you'd like and last but not least uh, make sure you subscribe to our youtube channel click the notification bell for our latest videos like our videos share them uh, comment on them. We do our best to be very interactive. So uh, hopefully this video helped you and happy trading Monday. Enjoy.